everyone, it's Jack and Ross here on Tuesday morning with the Wrestling News. Ross, how's it going? What a productive day yesterday was, Jack, the job where I took delivery of Shack at number two. And if we're counting five past midnight in Monday, I got me vaccine booked. I'm booked in for next Thursday, and I cannot bloody wait. Have you, man? I tried when I woke up today, and it just said you're in a queue, and I couldn't get out of the queue. Wait in the queue? Well, yeah, yeah. The page refreshes by itself, like every 15 seconds. All right, I'll do that after. I'll do that on my lunch break. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Cheers. No um, let's uh, let's crack on with the with the news headlines. First of all, a possible NXT call-up has been revealed. We also have an update on Andrade's AEW contract. And finally, a huge stipulation has been added to the title match at Hell in a Cell 2021. So yes, first of all, an NXT call-up according to WrestleVotes, and it's involving Eva Marie, who I actually forgot herself. She It's weird to think, but she was an NXT call-up as well. She was in NXT. She was Don't one of those... forget Jack the Jobbish. When Asuka's streak was still a thing, Eve Marie eliminated Asuka from a battle royal, therefore Eve Marie actually toppled the streak. Yes, she did. I, d- I had forgot about that, but thank you for reminding me. That's, that's Never made forget. Me, that's made me yet more excited for her eventual return to WWE, but we're still getting the vignettes at the minute. And according to WrestleVotes, the plans for her return involve having a muscle of some sort by her side. The two names that WrestleVotes say they've heard discussed are either Mercedes Martinez or NXT UK star Piper Niven, otherwise known to a lot of UK fans as Viper. Um, This is probably a good thing, Ross, would you say? We have no idea if this is a good or a bad thing. Who knows that uh, Eve Marie could have had... It's been sort of four or five years that she's been away from the wrestling at this point, hasn't it? So she could have turned into Okada over the past four years for as, as much as we know. So she might not even need some muscle. But um, I guess it's like an old trope in the pro wrestlers that get uh, the sort of heel. I think that she's a heel, that she is the sort of braggado- braggadocious sort of like, oh, look at me, I'm so pretty and so this, that and the other. Even though it's sort of under the veil of a babyface promo that it takes, you know, it takes 99 pictures to get that one good picture. It's yeah. such a hard life being a model. Yeah, I... I, I fell for them. I was like, oh, no, they really are going to bring her back as a baby face. But this news, if it's true, makes me feel like I've been a bit silly. Because surely if she was debuting again as a baby face, she wouldn't, she wouldn't have a, a sidekick or a hench, a hench woman, would she? Yeah, a hench yeah. woman. I, I hench. hope it's Piper Niven, me. Yeah, yeah, I long hope it's Piper Niven long, well. over, long overdue being on that, sort of, on that sort of level. I don't want to see Waste, waste in XT UK because we don't know the sort of the goings on around her life and whatnot. She might not even want to go to America for all yeah. we know, but um, she's certainly very much worthy of being on that sort of level of uh, Monday Night Raw, she? Yeah, I'd, I'd agree as well, 100%. Melter on the Wrestling Reserve Radio was talking a little bit about the NXT call-up process and said this. He said, the idea supposedly is that Vince gives Triple H six months notice so they can work the guy in and finish him up and do it in a way that's, that, that's what it's supposed to be. Uh, there's always changes, though, Melter says. Vince can always wake up one morning and say, I want this guy, ratings are down, I need some new guys, and then new guys are going to show up out of nowhere without the six months of planning, and some of them are in the middle of NXT angles. Now, I don't know if this process was in place when we saw the most infamous example of that, but it certainly didn't happen when it was Gargano Champa. Was it Ricochet and Alistair Black as well? That was yeah. weird. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's so many examples where it just looks like it happens on the fly. Vince wakes up one morning and thinks, hey, we need a new injection on Monday Night Raw, whatever, let's get some NXT call-ups. I guess this dates back to back in the day when the likes of Finn Balor, maybe, Kevin Owens were getting promoted to the main, well, moved over to the main roster, as Triple H likes to say, because they very much did feel like, you know, they've had their time in NXT, now it's time to do something else on the main roster. But today, that's just, it's just, it's just not true, is it? Surely. No, no, I, I can't really see that being true, especially especially when we were first getting those empty arena shows and you had the stories of was this was that during the lockdown era yes it was wasn't it where like you had stories of oh Chelsea Green and Vanessa Bourne they're waiting to go in the wings and then nothing ever really yeah. came of it yeah it sounds like a messy process but apparently yeah according to Meltzer the official line is that Vince gives Triple H uh, Triple H six months notice to finish up the NXT storylines I think that's probably worth keeping an eye on in the future to see if that does Unless sort of happen again. Go on. This is a Vince McMahon mindset. Six months in Vince McMahon's mind is actually just a day for the <laughs> rest of us. I, I bet that's that's probably quite true, actually. Um, moving across now to the other side of the great divide in North American wrestling, we're going to talk about AEW. According to PW Insider, uh, some people were asking them about Andrade El Idolo, formerly known as Andrade Cien Almas. They were asking about his contract in AW and the idea of him having 
creative control, but they've been told that that is not the case and that Andrade's contract is no different to anybody else's in terms of creative, which would be that Tony Khan has the final say in the booking of Andrade. Um, I think they've also confirmed Andrade versus Christian for this week's Dynamite. I'm still baffled, Ross, at the... I've not talked to you about this yet, but I'm still baffled at Andrade's debut. They've gone back to not knowing how to debut someone, haven't they? They yes, really have. I, I yeah. thought it was so poorly done. So it, I don't know if it was a last-minute thing. It certainly came across as a last-minute thing, but um, the way that sort of Vicky Guerrero started cutting her promo and then said some Spanish words and nobody had a clue what she said and then out walked Andrade like he was sort of straggling out the pub, sort of yeah. like just a lost soul walking down a, a lonely street. It was um, very weird. They need, it goes back to sort of the days of Butcher and Blade's debut. That's a, a, an infamous one that sticks out in my mind as one that just didn't just sort of make you go, oh, is that yeah. a, oh, it's, like, it's not the sort of effect you want from a, a debut like for someone the calibre of Andrade, is it? I, I definitely agree. And I don't understand why they couldn't have had him, you know, attack someone or at least interfere in a match or interrupt something. It was too... I think he fit into the show too seamlessly and it just felt like, yeah, it's just Andrade, it's just our new guy. Well, no, this should be a really big deal. Yeah, and, and why Vicky Guerrero? Like, well, what about Nyla Rose? Is Nyla Rose and Andrade in a stable now? <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't know what Vicky's allegiance is. I, I don't know what they're all about. They, they were sort of loosely aligned with Matt Hardy's stable for a bit, but I don't know if that's just because they needed to form a big heel stable to fight the Dark Order because there were so many Dark Order. I don't really know. Hopefully, I, Andrade, go on. I was just going to say, I just imagined, because AEW sometimes like to put like former WWE people in segments together just to, you know, for the casuals and whatnot, going, oh, look, it's Mark Henry and mm. it's Vicky Guerrero and it's Andrade. So maybe that was the thinking behind it. I've got no idea. That might be true. Hopefully, uh, despite a, a slightly uninspiring start, he can, I mean, he is easily good enough to impress going forward. So hopefully he gets a chance to. Uh, Impact Wrestling now, uh, has a bit of an interesting situation going on because their knockouts champion, Diona Perrazzo, has announced that she's going to face Lady Shani at Lucha Libre AAA's Worldwide Verano de Escandalo show on, excuse my pronunciation one there, on take? July 3rd. One take, yeah, on July the 3rd, but I don't know if I butchered it or not. Um, this will be Diona Perrazzo's first match for AAA. Uh, she debuted at Raider Reyes on May the 2nd in a surprise appearance, but that was only to join the commentary team. At the minute, this is another example, I think, of um, a bit of a loose feel in promotions in certainly North America and Central America, like Mexico, um, where it seems like they're a bit more fluid with the exception of WWE. People seem to be cropping up all over the place sometimes. It's quite interesting. That can be only good for the wrestling. The more I think so as well. The more promotions that work, the better <clears throat> they work together, the better it is for the, for the biz nars, isn't it? The biz nars. Absolutely. I mean, some of it, some of them have been a bit more of a non-starter, like Sammy Guevara and Impact and whatever that whole situation was. But with this one, I think it's probably good for Impact if their women's champion showing up at AAA, unless, of course, she loses the belt in AAA and then, you know... And, if, would, tri and if AAA never referenced the champion of Impact. Oh, like how... Um, like Rich Swan. <laughs> yeah, like Rich Swan. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, it's another example of... of sort of cross-promotion in, in uh, the Western wrestling scene, potentially. Uh, and finally, a huge stipulation has been added to the title match at Hell in a Cell, which is on the horizon. Uh, Bobby Lashley is, of course, taking on Drew McIntyre again in a Hell in a Cell match this time. And that was revealed during a contract signing on Monday Night Raw, the, the Cell stipulation. But it's not the only stipulation, Ross. The match also features a stipulation that if Drew loses, that's his final chance at the WWE Championship while Bobby Lashley is the champion. Good. Oh, we've mm. seen it enough times now, haven't we, Jack the Jobber? It's, it's about yeah. time that Bobby Lashley had a new, fresh challenger, and that would that stipulation there would indicate to me that Bobby Lashley's got this one in the bag. Who do you think that? Who who would you like to see challenge him if he does win? Who who is that? There's Kofi Kingston. Yep. Ah, uh, I can't really think. Alexa Bliss. Yeah. Oh, Lily. Have, you, have you seen Have you seen what's happened last night? On oh, Rome? I saw the mirror. I oh, saw the mirror. Shade, shade of. of Ultimate Warrior, which I, I saw that, uh, I think it was Sean Ross Sapp uploaded a thing where, do you remember that show that um, Road Dog and Josh Matthews used to do back in the day where they used to take the piss of infamous wrestling moments? Yes. I yeah. think it was, I think Sean Ross Sapp, Sean Ross Sapp shared, say that seven times quick, um, Sean Ross Sapp shared a little thing of um, WWE openly taking the piss of the Warrior thing from WCW with Hogan and the Mirror, and that was shades of that last night, so obviously short-term memories in WWE at the minute, it's just... Um, I don't know what to say about it. I was saying to Jack this morning, other Jack, um, who is this catering to? Yeah, 
I don't, Vince, I mean, he, he loves horror, maybe. Why is there so much spooky stuff now? I don't understand it, Jack. I don't understand it. Is it the kids? Were the kids like this watching? Probably. But one more thing. I want to turn it to Brian Alvarez for a second. Go on. He cut the table with a sword. I've not seen this part Drew yet. Drew McIntyre cut, cut a table in half with a sword. Whoa. Just went, hiya. See you later. Everything's become very cartoonish all of a sudden, hasn't it? Very, very nerdy. Yes, okay. Well, <laughs> on that note, thank you everybody for watching this video. Uh, leave your thoughts and opinions on any of the stories down in the comment section below. We're not certain yet if there's enough news, but we might be back with a second video later on. We'll have to wait and see. But thanks once again, and we'll see you very soon.